I'm here with Jill Gilder, Chris Hutnick, sponsored by Sonus. Uh, huge thank you to you guys. I mean, it's 2021 now. If you did not start a podcast over the last year, what are you doing with your life? Everyone has one now. All the cool kids are doing it. Um, today, we got these guys on talking about leveling up your podcast. So I'm going to say, I mean, this isn't just going to be something that if, even if you don't have a podcast and you have no intentions of starting a podcast, when it comes to audio, there's always something you can pick up. If you do video, guess what? You need audio. So I'm going to stay locked in because although I don't know if I'm, if I have a podcast in my near future, I do know that our newest member to the event space team, Scott Jolson has a podcast. All 37 of his subscribers are patiently waiting for him to take notes today. So without further ado, I'm going to kick it over to the guys who do it best. Welcome to the BNH Virtual Event Space, Chris and Joe. Thanks, Derek. Uh, Thanks, so hey, my name is Joe Gilder from Personas, um, coming at you from my studio here down in the Nashville area. And today we're going to talk about podcasting with Personas. What's cool about Personas for me is we kind of have you covered on all ends of the spectrum from the mic all the way through the software, back out the speakers and headphones which is great. So we're going to talk a little bit, um, kind of two sections today, uh, and feel free to throw questions in. We're going to leave time at the end to answer as many of those as we can. Um, we're going to talk about kind of the hardware software setup. If you're brand new to this and you're just thinking, I think I'm going to start a podcast. Derek was right. He pushed me over the edge. I'm doing it. Um, but you don't know what to get. You don't, maybe you don't have the gear. Uh, we'll have all that laid out for you for some options and a few different choices as well. Uh, and then I'll talk you through my workflow for podcasting. So I'm currently a retired podcaster. I need to bring it back up at some point, but uh, I've done well over at least 200, maybe close to 300 episodes um, of various different podcasts uh, in the last decade or so. So I've done it a lot and I've had a lot of experience of doing the me and a co-host version of the podcast of just me by myself answering questions. Um, and I got to a point where I was doing a weekly 30 minute podcast and I was able to the entire start to finish from sitting down to do the podcast to uploading it and being done uh, was took less than an hour. So, and a lot of that was due to what I'm going to show you today and kind of how to set things up in a way that just keeps it going quickly because you don't want to spend five days on your weekly podcast if you can get it done quicker. Now, speed's not always the most important thing, but I think we could all stand to do things if we're going to continue with good quality, but do it a little bit faster, that's always a win, right? So I'm hopefully going to help you with some of that today as well. I'll be showing you Studio One Artist, which is our uh, recording software platform. Uh, we'll dive into that here in a minute. So let's talk at the very beginning. We're just going to go through the signal chain. Microphone. We could probably all agree that you need a microphone if you're going to have a podcast. Um, generally, what I've done, I've kind of gone back and forth between using large diaphragm condenser, like this is a PX1 from Personas, and some sort of a dynamic, which this is the, the brand new, this is the PD70 from Personas. We just launched this last year. Really cool mic. Both of these under 200 bucks, I believe. Maybe not. I can't remember. Yep. Yeah, hang on. Hang on. I've got it on my b &H website. Yeah, the PD70 is 129 as is this mic. So same price microphone. So we're comparing apples to apples as far as price goes. Uh, you're used, you're probably used to what a typical condenser mic sounds like. It's nice. It's got a nice full low end. It's got some detail on the top end. What I like about it is I can get a good sound. So you're listening to this microphone right now. I can get a good sound and not have to be right up on the microphone because typically I'm reading questions on my screen. I'm interacting with lots of different things. A lot of times I would live stream while I was podcasting. So that's a whole other layer of complexity. So having a mic up in my face blocking everything is just annoying. So I got rid of that pretty quickly. But the other option is something like a dynamic mic. And for me, typically, I got to get this a little bit closer, but you can hear the difference. It's not a huge difference because um, I still sound like me, but here is the PD70 on my voice. So it's a little, maybe a little tighter. I'm a little closer to the mic. So it's got a little bit more of that in a world gone, like, you know, movie announcer sound to it. But um, then we go back to the condenser. It's a little bit brighter. You probably hear a little more room because it's not as close to my mouth. Um, but both options can be good. So honestly, I would say just pick one. They'll both get the job done, especially when you get to when it comes time to mix it down and make it sound good. Either choice will work well for you. Another choice from Personas, because I'm wearing a Persona shirt, is this is a brand new USB microphone from Personas. It's called the Revelator. Um, I'm going to go into this just a little bit today, but 
the two microphones I showed you before, these are regular old microphones. You plug in an XLR cable on the back, plug them into something else like an audio interface or a mixer to hear them, right? To turn them up, to do all that. The Revelator mic is actually a USB microphone. So it kind of bypasses the need for any other piece of gear and you just connect it via USB right into your computer. And then this is your, this is your mic. It has some built-in presets, EQs, compressors, and all that built in. It also has some really cool routing um, that I will show you in a second when we get to the software part. Okay, so we got the microphone, we picked a mic. Um, and real quick, a lot of folks will say, but Joe, don't you need a pop filter? I've never used a pop filter for the videos that I do um, and for podcasts that I do generally, because they're just so big, right? It's this big giant circle in front of your face and I need to be able to see what I'm doing, see my notes, see my screen. So a quick tip is just take the mic, instead of putting it right in front of you, just put it off to the side. A, it gets out of your way if you're doing a video. B, it still sounds the same, but anytime I say, you know, puh, puh, any of those sounds, generally the wind goes this way and doesn't pop the microphone. So I can actually get it nice and close to my mouth without having to worry about having a pop filter. A little quick trip for it. A little quick tip for you. Okay, so let's talk about audio interfaces. So we've got the, this is the PX1 right now. That's what you're listening to right now. 129 Personas microphone. Surprisingly good. Like I've been using a $300 microphone from Roswell Pro Audio for a long time. Um, and then they sent me this one because I started working for Personas and I plugged it in expecting to be all snooty about it. Like, oh, it's a $129 microphone. How good could it sound? Turns out it sounds pretty good. Um, and I can't, I can't hear much of a difference and I've used lots of different mics over the years. So just get a mic and do your podcast. It'll, you'll, you'll be good to go. All right. So now that we have a microphone, uh, what do we plug it into? If we're not using the revelator, which we'll talk about in a second, well, then we need some sort of audio interface. So an audio interface is the thing that goes between your microphone and speakers and the computer. It takes this analog thing, makes it digital so the computer can record it. And then the computer spits it back out via the same device. So this is an example probably a more complicated example of an audio interface. But if you see this, this is the fairly new IO Station 24C from Personas. As you can see, it is a USB device that's USB on the side. And yeah, you can't see it. Uh, it's also a control surface, which is beyond what we're going to talk about today. But I can control my software, transport, have a single fader here, all that kind of stuff. But the the bread and butter of this is it's just a, a simple two channel audio interface. I can plug up to two microphones in. I can plug my speakers into this. So I can hear back what I'm doing and I can also plug my headphones into this. So this microphone would then plug into this and that's how I get it recorded. And then this has some volume control on it so I can control the volume of my speakers, mute my speakers, things like that. Um, so that's one example of an audio interface. Let me share my screen real quick. And this is, so that's the IO station sells for 299, really cool box. If you need an audio interface and you would also like to dabble in something like our fader port, which is a mini control surface. I've had a fader port for years, the original one. It's a really cool box. Um, but if you're thinking you want more of a mixer type thing, we've got a line of mixers called the ARC. Um, there's an eight channel, a 12 channel and a 16 channel. Uh, and the difference between this and the 12 channel is just a hundred bucks. But as you can see, um, this will give you, if you're just more comfortable in a mixer environment, there's a lot of podcasters using this particular mixer. You can just plug your microphones right in here. You can have multiple. If you're in a situation, you're like, say you're Joe Rogan, you got interviewers coming in, you need to plug in multiple microphones. Hey, Joe, if you're watching this, um, then a mixer makes a lot of sense because you can just plug the microphones in and then you can adjust levels and do all that on the fly. This will still let you record each vocal to its own channel so you can separate them later. Um, but you could even record it just the whole podcast directly on the mixer if you want it. Uh, it has a built-in stereo SD recorder. So if you're on location, you don't want to lug your computer or you don't have a laptop, you could actually still record your podcast here, which is kind of cool. Um, and it just has the added benefit of being a physical mixer. Some folks just dig having a mixer. I'm one of those. Um, and as for another option, oh, hey, look, bnhphoto.com. There was one more I wanted to show you. It Oh, right, the Revelator. So back to, let me stop sharing my screen for a minute. Back to this, if you can see on my, um, my camera, this is that Revelator USB microphone I was talking about. What's really cool about this mic is that, like I said, it doesn't need an interface and it goes right in as a USB mic, but it's not like any other USB mic you've seen, which is such a, <laughs> I sound like such a marketer when I say that, but it really is. I've, I've legit used lots of USB microphones over the years. I've never really liked them, um, but this one turns out to be really, really cool. So let me open up my screen again, and I will show you 
what's cool about this mic. So this is our universal control app. Uh, if you use any Personas hardware, this is what lets you update the firmware. If you ever have problems with your Personas hardware, it's not working, you updated your computer. This is what lets you update your firmware. Um, but the Revelator has this really cool control panel. So as you can see, it's picking up my voice right now, um, but it allows me to do a couple of things. First of all, I can come in and I can add in, you know, some sort of a vintage EQ uh, onto the mic itself. And I can dial that in exactly like I want it. Same thing with compressors. I can throw a, you know, this FET comp on the voice, dial in, save a really cool preset. You can even add effects like reverb and delay and crazy stuff onto the mic. It's all being processed on the microphone itself. So this is just kind of a remote control for what's happening on the mic. It's very cool. But what's really interesting is if you do a lot of remote podcasting where your co-host is elsewhere on another computer on the other side of the planet, um, or you're interviewing different people all the time, um, there are apps that let you, you know, they could record it on their end and send it to you. You could use those third party apps that everything gets recorded to a browser and then you bring them all in. Or if you wanted to have as a backup, just record it yourself, which is what I would do because it's a lot easier. Um, this software here lets you create various different mixes. So I could have a different loopback mix for uh, one that goes out to, let's say right now I was using this for Zoom. I could have one mix just for Zoom that has my voice. I could have another mix um, that's just the playback from Zoom. And then I could set those up as different inputs into my system. So I could have a custom mix for going to Skype, for going to a live stream, for my main mix, for going to my headphones. As you can see, these faders move and I can change what mix goes where. And then I can choose inside my different pieces of software, I can tell Skype to listen to, listen to the Revelator loopback mix too. And it's gonna listen to just this one, which will maybe mute iTunes and only listen to Studio One and my voice. Uh, but then to the live stream, let's say that's plugged into Zoom, I can tell the live stream to listen to the specific audio device called live stream or Revelator loopback two or three or whichever, I lost track of which one I was doing. And that one maybe has everything except for my voice for some reason maybe i've got another source that i want to play there it's a really really handy device if you do a lot of different things where you want to do a live stream one day a podcast the next day um and you want to be able to do some really cool routing the revelator can handle that now i i, I know i i can't get into it as deeply as i would like to um just because for the sake of time and we're talking about podcasting today but um the revelator is a cool option we've got a lot of videos on our site as well that you can check that out even more all right let me go back to uh, let's see. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about software for a second. Um, we've got the microphone, the hardware that's plugged into software. Oh, I'm sorry. It's plugged into the interface, which goes into the software. But before we talk about software, you need to come back out. I'd recommend a good set of closed back headphones. Um, there's a bajillion out there, but you guessed it, Personas, we make our own. These beautiful babies right here. These are called HD9 from Personas. They're for sale at B&H, by the way. Um, and then a decent set of speakers that they're kind of a, you don't have to have speakers. If you want to do a podcast, you could do it all on headphones, but if you're looking for a good set of speakers, um, something like the personas Aris monitors, we've got a set of monitors. I just need to keep my screen sharing. Sorry. This set of monitors here, uh, they're one forty nine ninety five per speaker. So for 300 bucks, you get a really nice, really nice set of monitors. When we were at the NAM show two years ago, back before the world shut down, um, there were two different occasions where folks came to our booth, listened to a mix of one of my songs on a little setup there in the middle of a convention hall on these speakers. And they like pulled out their phones and bought a pair just right on the, right on the spot. They really do sound great. So if you're looking to do a podcast, you want to have some nice speakers to listen back without having to always be on headphones because being on headphones always can be super annoying. Uh, this would be a good set of speakers for you. And as you can see, everything I've shown you today is not expensive. If you want to go buy really, really expensive stuff, go for it, have fun, but you don't have to, to create a really good sounding um, podcast. Okay, so let's talk about software. Hopefully you can see my screen right now. I've got, this is Studio One Artist. Uh, one of the really cool things about Studio One Artist, so we have a couple versions of Studio One. There's one Studio One Prime, which is free. You can just check it out and it's very functional. Um, Studio One Artist, which if we check on b hs website, that might be the one that didn't show up here. It sells for $99 on b &H. Dur -dur -dur. there it is so this is studio one artist you can buy it outright for 99.95 
or you just buy one of our interfaces, buy the Revelator, buy this mixer, um, buy that IO station that I showed you a second ago. And all of our interfaces come with Studio One Artist for free. It's just included. Um, so you get a $100 piece of software with any piece of Persona's hardware that you buy. So you just have to buy the interface and you've got the software that goes with it. Um, and then there's Studio One Professional, which adds in a few extra features like a mastering suite, um, a show page for live performance, a few extra plugins, but you actually don't need any of those to do what we're doing today, which is recording podcast. So what I want to do now um, is kind of record a short little tiny podcast here with you and show you the process that I would use for doing a podcast. Now we can all agree there are a, as many different types of podcasts as there are people. Um, and so if you're doing more of a, an NPR style expose on drug trafficking in Bolivia, that's going to probably be a much more involved process than what I'm going to show today. But I've done a lot, a lot of podcasts where I sit down and talk about a topic or I sit down and answer user questions. And um, those have been the ones that I've, I, I engage with a lot. I prefer them not to be super, super produced, but you can absolutely do the super produced thing if you want. But here's how I would set up the podcast. And I think a big part of my workflow and what helps me and what helped me to be able to do a podcast quickly and get it done um, week in and week out without having to spend tons of time on it so I could focus my attention on other things like promoting the podcast is um, having a template set up that would be my starting point every week. So for example, we all want intro music, right? Well, let's say, let's grab this song. We can build in our intro music and even our transition music between sections of the podcast into our template. And then we don't have to um, reinvent the wheel every time, right? We can change it up every six months or something if we want. But for example, here's the let me turn this down just a smidge. Here is the, like the, what I would start with for my intro music for this podcast. And let's say, this was actually the, the music that I used for my podcast in the last version. Let's say I want that intro to start. I want it to start a little bit sooner. So we'll, we'll drag it in, drag it back. So now it does something like this. Let's say right here, right where it started to repeat that, that same section again, that's where I want to start talking. And so obviously I need that music to turn down. We, had, we released a new feature in Studio One pretty recently that makes this so much easier. I used to have to do this in a pretty kind of redneck sort of way where I'm slicing things up and adjusting the gains on individual slices of audio to make it work. Now you can do it even easier. So what we do is we right click on the audio, we come down, uh, we come over here and we click on this thing that says gain envelope. So all that does, it's really simple. It gives us a horizontal line that we can now use to adjust the volume of this audio without having to write automation, without having to do anything crazy. So we want to start right, right there. So I'm gonna make an edit point there and it looks a lot like automation, except what's happening here is it's actually changing the underlying audio. It's not, it's not automating the volume itself, it's actually changing it. So I can quickly go in and see what I'm doing with the audio and make my transitions. So I could make this drop down, let's say probably a good 12 dB or so at this section. And then I could do something like this. Sorry, you couldn't hear myself there. I just said this. Hey, this is Joe from Personas. Welcome to my B&H webinar, where we're going to talk all about how to level up your podcast and even release a 30-minute podcast in less than an hour. So we could do something like that, or I could just say, let's say I did something like this. Hey, this is Joe from Personas. Today, we're with B&H, talking all about how to level up your podcast. So that's my little intro. And let's say I want the music to fade back in after that. Well, I can do, I can do this little number right 
here. Come here. No, I want the whole thing to go back. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Oops, I deleted the wrong thing. <laughs> Thank God for undo, eh? Okay, so now I can grab this. I totally am jacking this up on the webinar. Hold up. I just want to bring up the whole section. As you can see, I didn't do it this way originally. So then it could do something like, let me get rid of that spot there. Okay, so then it would sound something like this. It cuts out for that section. Hey, this is Joe from Personas. Today, we're with b &H, talking all about how to level up the podcast. It's really easy to set that up. And the way I did it for my podcast was I would actually talk for a good probably minute, 90 seconds at the beginning. Like, hey, this is Joe. Here's what's going on. Uh, today, I'm thinking we're going to talk about this. Uh, here's the reason why. Oh, by the way, I've got a new video out on this. Go over to my YouTube channel and check it out. And what I would do is I would actually have the audio prepped for that beforehand. And then I would just come in and while I'm recording it, I would just watch the audio. Uh, I would literally watch this edit go by and I would just talk my way through it. So it'd be something like this. Did a new podcast this week. Oh, actually did a new video this week on how to do mid-side processing using the splitter tool inside of Studio One Professional. If you haven't checked it out, it's got some major updates lately that I think you're going to love. But let's dive into the podcast. And the music just comes right back in. So the, the idea here is set figure out kind of a workflow that you want to go for your podcast. So for me, it was intro music, or sometimes I would say at the very beginning, I'd say, this is episode 268. And then the music would start and then the music would cut out because I'd already edited it to do so. Um, and it feels a lot like doing a radio show. And I would talk over the music for this amount of time, which ended up being about a minute or so. And then the music would come back in and then it would fade out and I'd be into the main segment. Um, and then later on, I'd have another piece of music to introduce the next section. So let's do that real quick. Uh, and if you have any questions about this, I know I'm probably all over the place. Um, I've had an <laughs> this is too much information. I've had an ear infection for about two weeks. And so this ear feels like it's filled with water. So I feel like I'm yelling at you this entire time. So if you think I'm angry with you, I promise you, I'm not. It's just, um, <laughs> I just can't hear out of that ear. Um, so then I would say, I do the main segment for 15 minutes or so, 10 minutes. And I want to come into the next section, which would sound like this. That's too, that's too sad. Let's do, I think it was this one. So just let it play for four bars and then gain it down right, right there. So just gain that one down, fade it down about 12 dB or so. Then I would just let that play for another little bit and do a big fade out at the end. So now I'm talking along during my main segment. I see that part's coming up and I say, so that's my summary of why you should buy all your gear from b &H Photo. They're based in New York. So that's a good reason. They also know everything about everything, which is also a good reason. All right, let's jump over into the Q&A. All right, we got questions today from, surprisingly, from B&H themselves. They have a lot of questions for me, and I'm going to answer those as a part of our Q&A today. Whatever. So you get the idea. Um, I'm able to kind of, I'm almost editing the podcast on the fly by laying out my sections much like you would a radio show where you've got a three minute bit before the next commercial break or whatever. I've never worked in radio, but I'd love to. Um, no, I wouldn't. I, don't, I couldn't get up that early. But um, and so now my podcast would all be about 30 minutes because this is how I would run. Um, and then for the outro music. So I'd have like that middle section, one more Q&A. And then let's say the outro was the end of this song. Then I would do something like this I would come out of this bridge here now let's go yeah so I would let this verse play so this verse would fade in uh, as I'm getting ready to do you know, finish up my podcast this is the outro of my podcast so I would do the same thing again here I would do a gain envelope I want my podcast to finish here. I want it to kind of 
fade in here. And then I want this overall volume here to be down. And then I'm going to be out by here. So as I'm getting ready to wrap up my podcast, I see this is coming and I got two options. I can either time it perfectly, you know, do my best radio host uh, impression. Or the other thing I can do is because Studio One works so fluidly, I can actually move this audio around while I'm recording and Studio One doesn't hiccup, doesn't miss a beat. So I could be doing something like this. Maybe I realize now uh, I'm in, in answering the last question. I'm saying, and yes, that's why you need to use Personas hardware. Thanks so much for your question. So now I know I'm finishing out the podcast. I'm doing my outro. It's just going to take me a couple of seconds. I want to go ahead and have this in place. So I'll say, Thanks so much for listening. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure to head over and subscribe. If you have a question for a future episode, you can leave that at askjoe.com. See you later. So as you can see, I'm probably showing this. This may be a little overwhelming for you if you've not ever done any podcasting before, but you can see that was actually really easy. And then for, for that outro there, maybe I don't want it to play as long as it is. Maybe the outro is something like this. I can just cut up the end. And I can just fade it out nice and slowly. And that's this is my podcast. I've now done an intro. I've done a big main segment here. I've had a transition. I've done another segment of Q&A. And then I've got this outro music that kind of fades in over the end of the podcast. And then wham, hits you with a nice piece of outro music. So this is a, you know, how long have we been doing this? For 10, 15 minutes or so. And we've set up a template that we can now save as a template. And we can just use this over and over again. Uh, and that's what I did for years. And it keeps it fresh because I'm talking about different topics. I'm answering new questions. But if you've ever watched or if you listen to a podcast regularly, typically what you find is they're following a, a some sort of a format, not to the point of being boring and overly predictable, but there's like a comfort in knowing that, oh, he's about to say, like, I did this thing um, before... Okay, so during this first little intro segment, I would always say the word boom right before this big section here. So I would be saying something like, and we got a new kitty and his name is Boom. And then the music would come in and it would be funny. Uh, but to the point that people, like when I did it live on a live stream, people would be typing boom in the comments because they thought that's when it was coming. So it was just this little stupid gimmicky thing that I would do, um, but people started to love it. And they start to, every time they email me, they would say boom in the email. It's just a silly thing. Um, but having like some of those repeatable processes in your podcast can be as kind of a source of home and comfort for your listener. So they kind of know what to expect from you. Um, there's kind of a consistency there. But also, um, it helps you not have to reinvent the wheel every time you go to do a podcast episode. You know that I got to come up with something to say at the beginning, a main segment, and a Q&A at the end. And so you can have those figured out by the, time, by the time you sit down to record and then you've got it in place and ready to go. So let's, uh, let's rewind a second and talk a couple about a couple of things here. First, just from a general standpoint of setting levels to record. If you look in this bottom left-hand corner, this is the channel for my voice. One of the big mistakes people make, whether it's recording podcasts or recording really anything, is they think they've got to turn this up as loud as possible, that the only way to get a good sounding anything is to make sure that this little level meter is getting right up here as close to the very top as possible. And it's just not true. My voice sounds the same here as it does at lower volumes. It's a digital system. There's no, you don't get any extra points for pushing the volume really hot into your digital converter. So instead, give yourself plenty of headroom. You can always add volume later. Um, really easily, generally like with a limiter at the end of your chain, which we'll talk about in a second. But if you go in too hot and you get excited and you're talking about a topic that you love and for two minutes straight, you're talking in a louder voice and that whole thing is clipping, guess what? Maybe you don't know that while you're recording it, but you go and listen back and you realize, ah, I've clipped and it sounds terrible. Um, just for the record, here's what that clipping would sound like. It would sound something like this. Now, the way I've got this set up, I couldn't hear what that sounded like, but I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that sounded terrible. Um, and we don't want to do that. So set very conservative levels. I would say if your meter goes from here to here, you know, if the bottom is zero, the top is three, I'd say set it at two, like two thirds of the way up max. You can always make up that volume later, but you can't take away the clipping after the fact usually. So don't shoot yourself in the foot. Same if you've got folks that are coming in, they're always going to talk quieter when they're going, uh, check one, two, three. And then they start the podcast and they're, they're super loud. If you have it set low enough, you're not going to clip and have to start over and redo things. Okay. Um, one other thing I want to show you, and this is kind of something I haven't used, but if you 
So remember, what did I say about if you buy one of our audio interfaces from Personas? What do you get with that? You get Studio One Artist, which is this recording software you see in front of you. Uh, you also get something called it's this whole package of, called Studio Magic of different plugins from different manufacturers that have given them to us for free to give as a bonus to our customers. And one of the most recent ones is this thing called SoundSnap. So if you buy a Studio One interface um, or the Revelator microphone, you will get access, three months free access to this site called SoundSnap. And what it is, it's a massive collection of sound effects and just different sounds. So let's say I wanted to, I was doing a piece on airport traffic or something. And I wanted the sound of either the inside of the airport or plane taking off. Let's say airport ambience. Check it out. Look at all these files just about airports. I hit play and I can listen to some and audition a few. Bonus, that one happens to be in Russia. Uh, in Russian, which is even cooler. Um, and I can go through and say, and then I left the airport and I called for a taxi. Check it out. There is someone calling for a taxi here. Taxi! <laughs> so you can go through and find, like, you know, you listen to those NPR stories and there's, they're in a cafe and there's glasses clinking in the background. Maybe you don't have to go out and record the glasses clinking in the background. You can come find that here. You can search for diner. Boom. Here's a crowd, uh, an outdoor patio, and there's a crowd there. Doesn't that sound like the background to like an NPR story? So now what happens is instead of get, like you're, you get this free for a month and you can sign up later, or what's really cool about them is I can just download this and it just downloads as a regular old audio file that I have forever. So you get this account for free, just go in and find all the cool stuff you want, download it all. And then if you want to keep paying and, and like, you want to pay for it and continue to use it because you use this stuff a lot. Great. Or if there's just a handful of stuff that you need, that's great too. So I can go find it here. It's called crowd on a restaurant patio, busy and happy with voices. I mean, that is a well-named file. I can just drag this into studio one. And let's say I get into my main segment about how, you know, I was sitting down to interview at a coffee shop with this nice gentleman. And this is kind of what it ends up sounding like on the podcast. So I sat down with the Derek Fassbender and then we talked a lot about a lot of his hobbies and interests and things he likes to do. And we happened across a very interesting topic of, you know, um, so that, and then we end up with this really cool, like professional sounding podcast that has some cool background noise to it. So I sat down with the Derek Fassbender. It's crazy. I love that. Um, and so as you can imagine, if you have any topic, I mean, this thing has, I think it said over 100,000 different sounds. I wonder if I'm talking about elephants, if I could get the sound of an elephant. Yep. Apparently elephants growl. I did not know they did that. If I want to get the sound of a dolphin, because I'm doing something on that movie dolphin tail. Oh, there's no dolphin. That's a sad uh, tiger. I'm big into animals right now for some reason. <laughs> it's just so cool. So this, you get access to all of this for a full three months. Um, when you, Just by getting one of our interfaces, this is one of the bonuses that you get. And you can go download all the different Bengal tiger throat noises <laughs> that you want. Um, and it makes me wonder, I used to think that all those cool podcasts and NPR things that I listened to, that they were legit recording those things in those environments. And now I'm questioning as to whether they just pulled it out of something like this, which is just very cool. So you can imagine how just something like that, finding a few sound bits to add to the appropriate sections of your podcast. And I just dragged that into studio one, faded it in. I could fade it back out. I could do gains. I could do the little clip gain on that, whatever I wanted. It's a very, very cool thing. And it's just another thing you get with personas. Like you probably weren't thinking you wanted sound effects, but now, you know, maybe it triggered a creative idea in your head uh, if you've always wanted to do a story about there's this elephant sanctuary about an hour east of Nashville, where all these elephants, retired circus elephants and zoo elephants that are just getting older in years, they go and they have like a thousand acres of land to just roam and just live out the rest of their life. There's no public. You can't go see them. Wouldn't that be a cool story to do? Maybe you can't get access to it, but you can talk about it and have the sound of elephants in the background because you've got access to sound snap, which is very, very cool. All right, so let's talk about what do we do once the podcast is recorded? We talked about let's not record it too loud. 
Um, let's one thing about recording as well is get decently close to the microphone to block out as much of the room sound as you can. I've got different treatment in this room because I'm an audio guy and I do studio recording. Um, the, the more dead the room, generally the better. Um, but let's say we've got the recording and now we want to edit that voice. If we listen to the voice right now, it probably sounds kind of quiet. Hey, this is Joe from Personas today. Okay, so we need to kind of bump that up a little bit. So in all my years of doing, I mean, I've I run a YouTube channel called Home Studio Corner, which I started in 2009. So I've done literally thousands of podcast episodes, videos where I'm recording my voice and dialing that sound in. So I've had a lot of time to figure out what's the best approach to getting a voice to sound good in spoken word format. So podcast, for example, also works the same concept for doing videos. Um, and for me, it's just two tools, just two. Can you guess what the two are? I'm going to grab them here and throw them on. Um, I bet you can guess one of them. The first is EQ, which is just a regular old equalizer. The second is a limiter. Now, so many people will tell you, you need some sort of a gate to cut down on noise between phrases and you need a compressor because everyone says you need a compressor and you need noise reduction. So you don't need any of that. An EQ just to, just to get the voice sounding a little bit nicer, warm it up, take care of some of the harsher frequencies. And then a limiter, which literally just acts as the volume increase button that makes it loud enough to be able to hear. So right now we're listening to music that has been mastered, but the voice obviously hasn't. So the difference in volume is gonna be fairly significant. Hey, this is Joe from Personas today. Okay, so I need that volume to go up on that vocal. So the way I do that is by applying a limiter there. I set the ceiling to like negative one, and then I just crank up the gain uh, until it's about as loud as the music. It's muted. <laughs> hey, this is Joe from Personas. Today, we're with B&H, talking all about how to level. So that probably already sounds a lot more like my voice right now, um, because that's generally the process that I use. And then for EQ, I'll just give you a quick rundown of what I do. Generally, I'll do some sort of a cut of the lows, just so there's no like rumble down there. Um, I will generally come find like a low mid frequency that's building up a little bit. Hey, this is Joe from Personas. Today, we're with b &H, talking all about how to level up your podcast. And then, because my voice is nasally and annoying at times, I'll probably do a cut there. Hey, this is Joe from Personas. Today, we're with b &H, talking all about how to level up. And then if it needs a little extra top end, I'll boost the top just a little bit. Hey, this is Joe from Personas. Today, we're with b and that's it. That's literally, if I look on this, I'm using a Studio Live mixer right now. That's what you're hearing my voice on. That is almost literally the EQ that I'm using for you right now. And that's going into a limiter and it's coming up to you via the live streams platform. Um, same process that I use for my podcast. And that's if it's just me. That's also if I'm using, um, if I'm recording anybody else and have interviews, I do the same process. The EQ will be different, obviously, um, but it's EQ into a limiter, get a nice volume out of it and you're done. So as you can see, when you add all these components together, you end up with the ability to record a podcast. And if it's a 30 minute podcast, record it in 35, 40 minutes, quickly make sure it sounds good, make sure the levels are good and you can just go ahead and export and be done. Um, there's a question from Scott. Hey Scott, uh, says, is there a way to create a preset to keep every episode seamless? You mean as far as the sound of the episode going from one to the next being very similar? Yeah, that's what I do. So once I get to this point in the process where I've set up my, um, I've done an episode, and maybe I'll do a few episodes to kind of dial it in to get it exactly how I want it. But once I do have it there, um, I'll save all of this as a template. So let me show you that really quickly. So I'll do something like this episode's done. I'm thinking this is the one. I'll delete the audio, okay? Um, and then I'll go to save as template. And this will allow me to, it is not happening. All right. Mm, that's embarrassing. There it is. Okay. Save it. It's a template. So this is podcast template. And I'll put like today's date on there just so I know when it, when it happened. And I'll go, bam. So then next time when I go to make a podcast next week, I can go new song. And if I look on the start page, under this user template section, there's my podcast template I just created. 
So here is podcast number, I can't type two, and bam, it's got all my settings there, right? It's got my voice, it's got the EQ and limiter that I use, the voice is record enabled, ready to go. The music is there with all the edits that I did. Uh, it's even got my crowd noises, if that's something you have in every episode, or maybe you delete that and that's not in your template either, but you've got the track there waiting for it and you're good to go. So that's literally what I would do. I would sit down on Tuesdays at 1 p.m., which is when I did it, I would do that right there. I'd open it up, pick my template, get to the beginning. I'd start my live stream and I'd say, hey, this is episode 238 and go. And literally just from scratch, um, I'm within 10 seconds, I'm doing my episode. Um, now, again, I'm not saying that speed is the be all end all. It's just when you get into that creative mode and you, you when you motivate yourself enough to want to do a podcast, which is a whole thing in itself, if you're going to do it, you might as well make it efficient because the more friction there is to doing something creative, the less likely you're going to do it. It's like in the studio. If I don't have my guitars out, I might not pick up a guitar and play. If they're in the case, in the closet, and my amp isn't plugged in, um, there's just more friction points, and I might just be more likely to go watch Netflix than record a song. But if, it's, if I'm able to get set up and going really quickly, then that's going to make me more motivated to do it because all I got to do is hit three buttons, hit record and go, as opposed to having to set everything up every time. Um, maybe that setting up every time is fun at the beginning, but at some point that'll become tedious and it'll feel like friction. Then you'll be able to employ something like a template to help you do this thing over and over. And obviously this can apply to any sort of creative endeavor. I've got templates for the way I do videos and checklists that I use to just make it as mindless as I can. So I can just focus on the content and not have to keep thinking, okay, what do I need to do next? What do I need to do next? That's kind of why I've developed this process that I use for making podcasts. A couple of final things. When you finish up editing and you're ready to export, um, whatever software you use will have some sort of an export window like this. You're going to want to export it as an MP3 file. And typically when I'm doing music, I export it all at at least 320 kbps kilobits per second. Um, but a lot of podcast services will bill you more if your file size is larger. Um, and since we're probably not going for the best sounding podcast in the history of the world, I typically do my podcast at 128. That's a slightly lesser quality. The high end is a little less crisp. Um, the low end isn't quite as punchy, but it's a much smaller file size. And I could do, you know, five episodes a month on the $5 a month plan that I used on Libsyn um, versus probably tripling that amount of megabyte size at the 320. But don't go any lower than that. If 64 just sounds like garbage, it sounds like you recorded it through a phone over a modem from the 1996. So just don't, just don't do that. But that is, that's, I think, all the things I wanted to show you. One final thing, if you're, so I've shown you, <clears throat> let me go back to the other episode. I've shown you how I like to do podcasts. And a lot of it is doing it live on the fly. It's maybe it's because I'm a musician and I like to record things live, commit to things without having the option to go back and redo them over and over. Um, but the, there's a couple of reasons why I do that. One is for the speed, like I already talked about. But two, I've gotten much better at speaking like public speaking, doing things like this, because I forced myself week in and week out for years to record a podcast on the fly and to have to gather my thoughts and then execute that and not giving myself an out of saying, oh, let me stop and rewind and say that a little bit better. Oh, let me stop and rewind and say that a little bit better. Um, I do that with other things like my YouTube video sometimes, but for the podcast, I, it was important to me to just do it live. Um, and I had paid dividends and just kind of growing as a speaker myself, which is a great skill to learn, right? If you're, if you're doing a podcast, you at least have some sort of vision of getting really good at it, getting a huge audience and probably getting invitations to speak and to be interviewed on other podcasts and to maybe speak at events. You're going to want to be good at speaking extemporaneously off the top of your head, doing your podcast this way will help. However, uh, if you want to go kind of the more traditional way of recording it. And if you mess up, just, just say it again and then go edit it later. You can, and Studio One has one very cool tool called the Ripple Edit that makes that a lot easier. So if I'm recording this and I decide this blob was wrong and I repeated myself here, I can come in with that Ripple Edit turned on. And if I hit delete on that, it just pulls the audio to the right back. Uh, it's a very common tool like in, in video editing. It's not as common in audio, uh, but it's super great to have that there. I've got that assigned to a keyboard shortcut, or at least I did. That would do that for me. Very, very cool. Allows you to, if you're going to have to do it this way, um, it still allows you to edit it fairly quickly um, without having to lose a lot of time. 
So I think that's it for what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, if you have questions for me, it can be about anything if you want. Um, obviously, we're talking about podcasting, but if you have questions about Persona's gear or just home studio stuff too, I'm happy to stay and answer those, um, whatever makes it valuable for you. But B&H, thank you all for having me here. This was fun. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, it looks like Chris jumped on one of the questions that was in there from Kate uh, asking. So Kate records a podcast with a lot of people who say ums and ahs. <laughs> I think <laughs> as anyone who has ever either interviewed people or had a podcast, there's a lot of people that you don't realize how many ums and ahs and likes yep. you say. Um, so, but I'll just rehash it there. Chris had said, uh, Studio One makes editing relatively easy, but it's still a manual process. So it takes time to listen to a recording, highlight the uhs and ahs and cut them out. So unfortunately there is no quick fix. Maybe one day it'll be like, uh, you know, you know, when you're, when you're recording and you take like five seconds of clean audio so that you can clean, you can just do like a quick select all <laughs> copy that maybe the, the, they'll uh, create something one day, a firmware update for uh, ums and ahs and likes. We actually we'll, had a conversation we'll on one, it. once at Personas about, could we have AI that, that does a transcription of the underlying audio. And then you just know that UMM was said at this timestamp and you just set an algorithm to go, f I don't know if you can do it, but but using that ripple edit that I showed you, Kate, will make that a little bit quicker because the ums are pretty clear. You can say, oh, that's an um. I just edit that, make sure ripple edit is on and it does some of the work for you. Um, so you don't have to click it and then drag it back. So you, that doesn't seem like a big time saver, but you do that. 70 times over a two minute piece of audio because your homeboy can't stop saying, um, uh, that starts to starts to save some time and make your life a little bit easier. But yeah, ums are the worst. And I probably said, um, um a lot on this. Yeah. Webinar. <laughs> I'm more of a like person. I think I say like a lot. So like. apologies to any podcasts I've been on where I like said like a lot of, <laughs> you know, like, I think I, I say, I think I say, you know, a lot, you know, you know, you know, yeah, you know, it's another one. That's another one. I I do that. gonna... You know, I was, uh, and I can't think of the, I can't think of her name, Reese Witherspoon. I was compared to, I, I had a comment one time. Somebody said he felt like he was listening to Reese Witherspoon when he was listening to me talk. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to take that as a naughty compliment. <laughs> and yeah, I said, like, thanks. I think. <laughs> Oh man, Matt says, uh, "Good presentation." Joe clearly has the Matt. I agree. I was thinking the same thing. I'm glad you said it. Matt is one of our longtime viewers here. Uh, hey, so Matt. welcome, welcome, Matt Spinetta. Joe, I was thinking the same thing. I think part of it, you, the voice sells it. You don't have to sell anything. The voice does it. I got a face for radio, bro. <laughs> same. <laughs> Thanks, that's Matt. why they. That's why they put me on here, where I get to just. You know, talk for ten seconds and then turn my my camera off. <laughs> what, uh, Joe? I mean, what are other options wise? Or what have you seen? I know obviously it's it's easy. You know, some people make the investment. I think it's the same in any of the arts. You have the people who are like, look, I want the best stuff. I'm gonna go out there. I'm I look at it as an investment. I'm gonna invest in great gear. For somebody who is maybe saying, all right, I want to dabble. Um, you know. I don't know if this is going to be a thing, I but I don't want to limp in. Yeah. So for the people like that, I mean, is it, do you recommend going all the way on the mic or is there a, I'd say more of an entry this. level? Option? So like it, it's because you need, you got it. You need a mic. You need a way to get that mic recorded. So you need some sort of interface. So something like the revelator, which is USB already, that gets you the mic and the connection to the computer and then just a set of headphones that plug into the bottom. That would be a good starting point. And if you, you eventually get to the point of where this has taken off, I really enjoy it. I'd love some speakers or I'd love a couple of different options for a microphone or I'd love an interface so I can record multiple people at the same time. You can always go that direction. Um, but that would probably be, I would guess the, the most cost effective way to get into it. And there's other USB mics out there. You guys sell them all. Um, and they, they'll all get the job done of recording. This one has a few extra bells and whistles like I showed you. But just a mic and a, a USB mic and a headphone is a great place to get started. I mean, some people get started on, what's that app? Anchor and their phone. And they're just, you can hear they're just talking into their, into their phone. And that's how they do their podcast. And maybe that's a great way to start to see if you even like talking to people over. Because talking to somebody when they're not in the room is weird. Um, 
I'm super used to it now. But when I remember the first time I did like a webinar, I was like, I'm talking and somebody's listening, but I'm, I'm literally a dude in my room talking to myself. And it just, it's just weird. So maybe you start with a phone, just make some, make a few episodes that way. You can always upgrade the quality later. Um, people can be pretty forgiving about that when you're starting out, but eventually they want it to sound good. So you'll need to upgrade at some point. Yeah. I mean, that's always one of those things. Whenever we talk either video or audio, that's always the thing that comes up. And it's like, first and foremost, if you, you can have, for the people that do video, you can have crappy video, but with great audio. And it's a lot more bearable than if you have great video and horrible audio. Yeah. Like you have the audio, the audio has got to be there. I mean, that's the make or break. Um, another question in this guy, Scott Jolson keeps harassing us. He's asking, how do I get more <laughs> viewers on my now? Uh, Scott, is, <laughs> Scott is asking for pros and cons um, versus a traditional mixer using the studio and software. I mean, I will say as somebody who doesn't know any of this, I, I'm slightly versed in premiere and video editing and it looked like, okay, same idea. It looks actually a lot more simple because um, you only had to worry about the audio, but for, for, Somebody who is used to using a traditional mixer, what are the pros and cons versus the Studio One software? Well, I, I still use a traditional mixer. Like right now, literally, I'm like I was when I was showing you the different microphones. I've got a mixer in front of me. Um, this is it right here. This is this is what sits in front of me. So I'm oh, using wow. the, the bigger Studio Live mixer, which obviously is way overkill if you just want a podcast. But Damn. Um, that's that's my workflow because I like to be able to hear things right off the board, have some things at my fingertips, but um, as far as like, you, you still got to record it somewhere, right? You're still going to want to edit it. If, 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 if you're doing it, like I talked about, even if it's minimal editing, you still need to do that. Some, you still need to mix it and master it and get it up with a limiter and things like that. Um, so at some point you got to interact with the software. Um, and so that's, that's the point where I think you, you gotta, like you do video at some point that's got to go into at least iMovie. <laughs> to at least you know edit the two shots together right you got to do you got to put it in there somewhere so we try to make that as painless to get into as possible if you already got one of our mics or interfaces you've got the software so that's not another decision you have to make but um but you can still absolutely incorporate a mixer into your workflow um just have it record the different tracks and then um but at some point you got to get in the software and do a few things for sure definitely i mean it's like it's the good and the bad, right? You have all these these influencers out there now. Everybody has access to, you know, YouTube and, and all these different podcast channels where it's like, it sounds so easy. Like, I'm just going to get out there. I'm going to talk into my phone and do it. Uh -huh. But then I watch this and I'm like, well, no, I want to do it right. I don't want to uh -huh. go out there and, and sound horrible. You know, it's, it's like you need that balance. And I think this is great, you know, just to get all the information out there. And there I go with the, you know, yeah. uh, to least, get all like, the information is... out there. This is what it could look like, and maybe you're not going to get there on the first episode. But you know, my, my first YouTube videos were the webcam on my laptop, and then I had one of those. Remember the flip cams with the big red button, and they were like had the little yeah. USB stick that popped out. Like that was my camera. That was my nice camera, um, and I used it for years, and it was fine. It was terrible, but it was fine. We got there Kate, eventually. Kate is asking, "What do you recommend for hosting?" Ooh, so I don't. I set up my podcast so long ago that there are a lot more options that have come out since. So I'm kind of locked into okay. what I use, but I did use a service called Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N, which stands for liberated syndication, I think. Um, theirs is cool. Uh, it, they have different tiers. So if you're not uploading a ton, it's like mine right now is $5 a month um, to just keep my old episodes up and running. Um, but there's a bunch. I, I, would, I would not be the best guy to ask about that. I know I used a WordPress plugin for a while that backed up to like blueberry. So there's, there's lots of options, but um, I'm not gonna, I can't answer any more than that. So I was like, I'm out of the game. Don't drive me back in. Yeah. I'm not going back into podcasting. Now they got it's hard because you get locked in and you got to stick with it. So yeah, it's, it's, well, it's yeah. I mean, that's another good. thing too, is like, you need the longevity, the longevity. It's not something you just jump in and like, I'm going to do three episodes and call it a day. It's not a Netflix right. series. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, as I was saying, they, they got Clubhouse now. Have you seen the Clubhouse app? I have. Like, I haven't played with it much, but I'm I'm in there, but I haven't messed with it much. Yeah, but some of my podcasting buddies are all that over much. It. Yeah. Well, it's like I mean, it's like a live podcast, I, you know. And and, yeah. and I wonder, you know, it's interesting to see where the world of podcasting 
is going to go. I mean, I think I think it's one of those things that's like talk radio where it's always going to have you're always going to have your people who yeah. love the product. They're going to stick with it. And, you know, there's, there's always a need for it. No matter what comes out, it's always going to be your podcasters, your, pod, your people. I There's people that love YouTube. There's people that are diehard podcast listeners. So I think and then there's, you know, I can't watch a YouTube video while I drive or mow the grass. So the, I can't read an article either. So there's still that audio, whether it's audio books or podcasting, which this all applies to audio books too. Um, I think there's always going to be a place to listen, to just listen. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, hey, when you got clean audio, I don't know. For the, someone out there, let me know. I want, I want to know. I'm gonna have to listen to this replay and see because I hear your audio, Joe, and I'm like, man, I want my audio to sound like that, and I know it doesn't. <laughs> so it, it really does. It, I love when we do these because you get a clear comparison where all somebody has to do is listen to us talk back and forth, and you can hear the difference in the audio. Yeah, yeah. So, I totally get that. That was itself, man. You don't even have to come on here and uh, and pitch anything. It's like just listen. It's a, I should have just said out. hello. <laughs> you out. could have stopped there. A Go lot of it. <laughs> there you go. Well, hey, if you ever want to come in and you know you get bored and, and you know you don't feel like uh, you're doing enough and you want to throw something else on your plate, you want to jump in and host this. I'm always down to take a day off and let you jump in for me. <laughs> that does sound like fun. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Joe, this has been great, man. Um, a lot of information there. I'm gonna have to rewatch it because I know I keep, I keep putting it on the back burner. But I, yeah. you know, if you, when you threw out the audiobook idea, I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what? Maybe that's what I should do. No podcast. I'm gonna do an audiobook. I'm gonna write a write a book, record an audiobook. Yeah. I'll I'll have oh. you come in and voice it for me, <laughs> and that'll be my new my new direction. I love it. But, we just changed your entire career right here. There we go. Every day, every time I get someone else on who inspires me, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do that now. So I'm, I've gotten <laughs> so far off track of where I started years ago in my creative journey, but that's the idea. Keep it rolling. Um, like I said, it, it's always great to get new perspectives on here and really just all the information. I really do sit here and, and, and listen and pay attention to all this stuff. It's hard to grasp, especially when it's something that's out of my realm, such as audio. And it's so... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So complicated. You made it very easy, very simple. The software looks incredibly easy to use. Um, yeah, we're going to put nice. Scott Jolson to the test. So Scott Jolson, that is my test for you. I, I want to see you using this software within the next six months. I want a full report back on it. And then we'll get the Personas team back here to uh, touch base. I feel like Scott's avatar is just staring into my soul right now. <laughs> i'm gonna be seeing that avatar in my sleep tonight it's just burning a hole there he Very is serious. you got some video on scott i mean at any last questions what what are you currently using how does this stack up to to what you were looking at uh i don't i don't want to i don't want to say what i'm using because it's embarrassing <laughs> Uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely not as professional as this. And uh, I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a just export everything straight, straight out kind of, kind of plan. But uh, yeah. I definitely, I definitely like this. It, it looks uh, really easy to use and simplistic, which, which is really neat. Uh, there's a lot of cool features in it, stuff I didn't know about, which uh, definitely Derek, you know, I'll, I'll give you the rundown on it. We'll get something going and uh, you know, I'll keep in contact with Joe. He'll, He'll yeah. teach me and I'll teach you. There we go. This really was great. Um, I'm glad we had Scott here to kind of be like our, our barometer for how easy this is. But I, I do want to see where we go with it. Um, Scott, we got to put you to the test, man. Yeah, I, know let's I, love, do it. I love issuing tests on here. But now, Joe, Chris, thank you guys both for your time. Uh, huge thank you to Personas for our, you know, the presenting the presentation today. We'll keep in touch. We'll get you guys back on. I love audio stuff. Love I love podcasting. We'll uh, we'll touch base and circle the wagons. Yep. But uh, to all of our viewers, thank you guys for tuning in to another rousing rendition of the BNH Virtual Event Space. If you would like to see more of Scott Jolson on a future broadcast, <laughs> please press one. But that is it for now. We will catch you guys next time on another rendition of the BNH Virtual Event Space. Catch you all next time.